In the previous video, we got our development environment set up and we got Flappy Bird installed. We also took a look at how Flappy Bird was structured as a reinforcement learning environment. In this video, we're going to implement the DeepQ network with PyTorch. Now, DeepQ network and DeepQ learning are kind of used interchangeably to describe the overall algorithm. So it's a little bit confusing, but for this video, we're only building the neural network that we're going to be training on Flappy Bird. I hope that is clear. Let's get started. A DeepQ network is nothing more than a regular network with fully connected layers. What makes it special is that the input layer represents the current state. So the current state is the combination of these 12 pieces of information. So we would expect 12 nodes as the input some nodes representing the last pipe or the pipe that we just passed, uh, some information on the upcoming pipe, and some information on the bird's position and angle. The output layer represents the actions. So with flappy birds, there are only two actions. So we would expect two nodes here. One node representing, well, the bird doing nothing, and the other node represents the bird flapping its wings. The values of the output are the Q values or Q for quality. For example, given a certain state, the output is something like 0.1 and uh, this one maybe 0.6. The higher value represents the best action given the state. In this case, the best action is to flap its wings. The Q values are also called expected return or expected reward. So in this state, by taking this action, we expect to get this amount of reward back. The goal of the algorithm is to train this network such that with any given state, the network is able to predict what actions are best in that state. And the network that we're going to train, we'll call this the policy network. After training the network, the policy dictates the actions that the agent should take. Now, what about the uh, layers in between? The number of hidden layers and the number of nodes in those hidden layers can vary depending on how complex your environment is. That is something that you can experiment with. Okay, let's turn this network into code. I'm back at VS Code. Since we're going to build the network in PyTorch, I need to install PyTorch first. Let's do that. I'm going to go to PyTorch's website. Okay, here's the command to install PyTorch. I'm on Windows. I'm going to use Conda. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can use your GPU to do the computations. I'll just pick the latest version of CUDA. If you do not, then just pick CPU. I'll grab the command back to VS Code. I am still in the DQN Conda environment. And let's install PyTorch. Okay, PyTorch is installed. Let me create a new file. I'll call it dqn.py. Let's start by importing PyTorch. The standard way to create a network in PyTorch is to define a class. I'll call the class dqn and I'll inherit the nn.module. We need to implement the init function. By the way, I have the Codium extension installed right here. And that's where the auto-generated code is coming from, in case you're wondering. In the init function, I want to pass in the dimension of my input layer and the dimension of my output layer. I also want to pass in the hidden layer dimension. Let me bump this up to 256. In PyTorch, the input layer is implicit. I don't need to write code for it. So what we're doing is to define the second layer, which is the hidden layer. FC1 is this layer. I don't need any more hidden layers. Let me do my output layer. It looks like the code is writing itself. If you haven't tried Codium yet, highly recommend it. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. Okay, the next function that we need to implement is the forward function. And it knows exactly what I want. Let me accept these. So the init function defines the layers and then the forward function does the calculations. The input x would be the state, those 12 informational values. We send the state through layer one. We'll pass that through to an activation function. 
we are using the retrofied linear unit function, which is a common activation function to use between layers. We'll send the output of that to our output layer, which calculates the Q values. And that is it, not even 10 lines of code to define our neural network. Now we should do a simple test to make sure the network works. Uh, using Codium, I'm gonna generate the code for my main. With Codium, I can hit Control I. It'll bring up this prop here that I can type in my command. I'll just say generate main and submit. Here's the code that it generated. I'll accept it. Let me send in 12 nodes for the states. Two for the action is good. This declares the network. Torch.ran creates some random input. Send the random input into the network and then print out the two outputs. Let's run the code. I'm hitting F5. Okay, we get the output of these two numbers. It's more or less meaningless at this point. We're just sending in some dummy values to make sure the network actually calculates something. Let me put a breakpoint here just so you can see what's happening with the random generation. I'm gonna hit F5 again. Let me go to my console. I'm gonna hit F10 to go to the next line. Let me print out the state. Okay, so it generated 12 random numbers, but notice that this is uh, this has a shape. This has a shape of one by 12. So why is PyTorch generating a two dimensional matrix? Why not just use an array of 12? That is because PyTorch uses the first dimension for badging, meaning that we can send in a whole batch of states and PyTorch will calculate them all at once. That is much more efficient than calculating one state at a time. So let me illustrate. I'm gonna stop the current run. Let's say the bird took 10 actions and passed through 10 different states. We can actually collect all those states and send it all into PyTorch all at once. So I'm gonna randomly generate 10 different states and then we'll send it through PyTorch all at once. Okay, let me move the breakpoint down here so we can see what the input looks like. We're sending a batch of 10 states into PyTorch all at once. And let me hit F5 to continue. Go back to the terminal. As you can see, PyTorch took all 10 states and calculated 10 separate sets of Q values. Okay, so we can talk more about how this works later on. Okay, for now we're done with the network. Let's move on. I'm back at my agent.py file. Before adding in the DQN, let me wrap my code around a class and a function. I'm gonna use the run function to both do training and also run the tests after training. So let me pass in two parameters. Is training and whether to render the environment. Over here, I only want to render if my render variable is true, otherwise don't render anything. I'll add that up here too. Now I can import the DQN and I can declare my policy DQN. And these are the inputs that I actually need, but uh, let me take this out and put it here. So this is the number of actions. I'm gonna put that here. This is my number of states. If you remember from the last video, the shape will get us 12 in the case of Flappy Bird. Since we're doing PyTorch, we wanna see if we can use GPU for processing. And this is how we can check it. Let me import torch. Using torch.cuda that is available, we can see if GPU is available. If it is not, then it will default to CPU. Now down here in my policy DQN, whatever the device is, I can send the DQN there for processing. I think we're good to stop here. Join me in my next video where we implement experience replay and maybe add the hyperparameters and epsilon greedy. If that video is available, it should have popped up by now. Otherwise, maybe check out one of my other reinforcement learning videos.